Good to see you all. Um, anybody here in a relationship of any sort? Everybody's hands should be up. Because I said, in a relationship of any sort, with your brothers, sisters, business people, colleagues, careers, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. So, so, so basically, we're all in some kind of relationship. That's the point I want to make. And I'll tell you this. We're going to talk about relationships between men, women, um, married people. But the principles are the same. The principles are the same. Um, what you learn here can be applied to everything, everything that you ever do. Amen? And at the end of the day, you're going to be experts in relationships. And it's just going to be wonderful. Um, I'm going to touch real, really quick about, this is, this is Living in Love Part 3. We did Part 1 one Sunday ago. We did, was it Thursday? Okay, we did Part 1 on Thursday, last Thursday. We did Part 2 on Sunday. This is Part 3. And there are four more parts before we're done. Amen? And, and um, we spoke last time about God expects us to love. Actually, it's a commandment. Commandment. John 13, 34 says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. And as I, have, as I have loved you, you also love one another. So there's a commandment. That's like about the only commandment we have now. You know, and, we, and, and Jesus Christ told us that when we, we love one another and love God, we will actually have fulfilled the law. For example, if I love Jesse... I won't steal his stuff. Thou shalt not steal. So I won't steal his stuff. You know, if I love, you know, Jumai here, I'm not going to covet her car because I love her. I'm not going to murder because I love them. I'm not going to cheat because I love. I'm not going to do, to, to, to do whatever it is because I love. So love is actually the basis, the foundation of the law. If we would understand lo love and walk in love and live in love, like this title is Live in Love Part 3, um, we would have fulfilled the law. And we would actually be living the life that God wants us to live. There is this really awesome, enjoyable, fun-filled life that God wants us to have. And actually, we can achieve it by living in love. Amen? And, and God really desires that you enjoy all your relationships. That your marriages are enjoyable. That you are not supposed to endure your marriage. You're supposed to enjoy your marriage. I'll say it one more time. Because a lot of people are what? Enduring. Instead of enjoying. Do you get that? So, so we're just going to look at some, some, some basic things here. If we look at... Um, John 15, 12, it says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And that is wonderful. We've spoken about the web of relationships. This is an interactive session. So if you have a question, you can write it down. So we, do we understand about the webs of relationships? Because, because life is about how you're getting along with everybody else. We're all interconnected. Do you just get that? We're all, every single one of us, we're interconnected and we connect with people. If we have bad connections, then there's nothing flowing to us. Amen? If we have good, good connections, there's an open pipeline to us in all sorts of ways. So it's just really important that, 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 that we have that. Also, last time we spoke about worldly wisdom and we spoke about godly wisdom. There's a huge difference between worldly wisdom and godly wisdom. And the funniest thing is most times godly wisdom is practically the opposite of what worldly wisdom is. So, 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 so if you're thinking from the, 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 the viewpoint of the world, you are, you're, 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 you're seeing things differently, you're saying things differently. Amen? For example, um, in the world, if you're trying to get something, you go take it. Did you get that? If you're trying to get something, you basically go out there and get it. It's like, I'm a go-getter. Any go-getters here? You, know, you, go get, you just go there, go get it. Okay, worldly wisdom is a little bit different. You're a go-giver. <laughs> because you sow. In, in the kingdom, you sow and then you reap. Which means you give your seed and then you get your harvest. Do you get it? It's, 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 it's not flowing in the same direction. But it's proven that if you stick with, with godly wisdom, 
you will have success. You will have sustainable success. You can get some degree of success with worldly wisdom, but you're going to work hard for it, and it's not going to be sustainable because once you stop working, it's gone. But when you've sown, the difference about sowing and reaping is that there is a continuous harvest that comes. If, you, if all you did was take, once you stop taking, it's over. I'm, I'm explaining something that's of value here. Because if you, if, you, if you keep taking, once you stop, it's finished. But if you sow, after you stop sowing, you still continue to get a harvest. So godly wisdom is a lot more sustainable in every respect. Amen? You're blessed in Jesus' name. And, and the problem too in the world today is that a lot of marriages are, are, are just, I mean, just have problems. And the issue is that Christians are not using godly wisdom to run their marriages. Christians are, are using worldly wisdom to run their marriages. There's something called um, uh, it's uh, practical atheism. Where, 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 where you're not an atheist, you believe there's God. Okay? But you are living your life like there's no God. You're not praying. And you're not using God's wisdom. So there's an atheist here that, does, that says there's no God, and this is the result in his life. But there are many Christians that are practical atheists. Everybody say practical atheists. That's a person who does. So, so, so basically, they believe there's God. Because you're a Christian, there's God. But even though we believe that there's God, we're not doing anything in line with the kingdom to get kingdom results. So I'm a Christian, but I'm not praying. I'm a Christian, I'm not sowing. I'm a Christian, I'm not walking in love. Then my results, I get the same results as the other people. I don't want to call any other, as other people. Okay? But, but that's not supposed to be the case. Because, because we are the, the anointed and the selected, we are the ecclesia, we should do better. We are supposed to be the head and not the tail. Above and never beneath. Amen? 1 Corinthians 3.19 says, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. I mean, that's just like straight in your face. The wisdom of what? This world is what? Foolishness with God. It's right there in your face. You just can't get away from that. And, and we believe what the Bible says. Amen? Are we all together? Where this is a group of people that believe everything that the Bible says. Do I have an amen? Do I have a real amen? Yes. Fantastic. Fantastic, fantastic. And, and last week, we looked at Ephesians 5.33. It's very clear. It's very clear. It says, each one of you also must love his wife. It doesn't say you must love your wife when she smells good, she dresses good, and she cooked your best stew. It doesn't say you've got to love your wife when she's respectful. It doesn't say you've got to love your wife. There's no condition. You see, the Bible says that, 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 that you know, those who have ears, let them hear. That you will see and not perceive. Now, a few things. It's like, there's no condition. The main key to, to open that verse to your, to, your, to your understanding is the fact that there's no condition in that verse. So, which means if you are in a relationship or you're married, do not, what, what you're supposed to be to the other person, let it not be conditional. You get because if you stay the course, if, if you continue doing the, the right thing, even if that person um, went astray, they will eventually come back on course. Do you get that? Very soon, I'll get to a point where I teach you. It's something we call um, uh, what's it called now? It, it's 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 called um, repairing a downward spiral. It's like correcting a downward spiral. Where where if your marriage is going badly. It's, going, it's spiraling downwards. There's something you can do in your power to force it to go back up to where it's supposed to be. It's amazing, but, but you will sacrifice. You will understand, but if you continue, it will get back up. You can actually stop it and, and, and change that spiral fall into something positive. Amen? And what do the women want? Women need to be loved unconditionally, and men need what? Respect unconditionally. And I did tell you this. Even before I knew the Bible, I was a guy in the world, you know, doing my thing. I used to say this very, very innocently. It's like, I'm easy going. I'm not difficult to please. But don't disrespect me. If you disrespect me, you're going to get it. I just like, that was just it. 
Like if you, 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 you can dance circles around me, but that, that's okay. I handle it. But if you suspect me, we're going to have it out. Amen? I, but, but I never read the Bible. But, but when I get here, it says here simply, it says, 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 and wife must respect her husband. Without condition. Without condition. Any guys here feel that need for respect? Any guys here? Wave your hands if you feel, you know. If you get, yeah, good, 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 good. No, 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 no. <laughs> which is a wonderful thing. But, 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 but if we go back, if we go to Ephesians 5, 25 to 27, it says, husbands love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Now, that's a key right there. Like, at no point have men been asked to go out and look for women that will submit to them. Um, I used to, to run a group, a uh, uh, cell group, and there was a young man, I said, okay, okay, you know, what are you looking for in a woman? He says, a woman that will submit to me. And I said, young man, you're a very wicked man. Because if that's what you're looking for, you're going to be very wicked. Because the Bible didn't send you to do that. The Bible says, go look for a woman that you can love like Christ loved the church. That's what the Bible says. And how did Christ love the church? That he gave himself for her. He died for her. He took her punishment. He took her punishment. He took her sickness. He took, he, he took everything. Which means, if wifey went out, got in trouble, and they were about to lash out ten lashes, she said, hubby, where are you? And you show up, you just say, ah, stop, 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 stop. Mr. Mopo, stop, stop, stop. This is my back, kidding me. But, 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 but that's what the Bible says. That, now, 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 most women struggle with submission. If that man took the ten kings for you, will you struggle to submit? No. You see, see the, the, like, the Holy Spirit that wrote the Bible, he knows what he's saying. Let's, let's, let's get it straight. Let's just get it straight. Let's get it straight. Uh, if, if, we, if we love them like Christ loved the church, which is what he's asking, they will automatically submit to us. Amen? So women, don't be, like, like if I came here and I said, I was going to teach you on submission, many women here would just, just tune out. And women, don't be afraid of submission because this is what the Bible says. If he comes to you and loves you just like Christ loved the church, then submit because that's the man. Amen? And, and one thing about relationships is relationships are two-way streets. Write it down, two-way streets. Two-way streets. If your partner is coming at you, you've got to be going back at them. If not, one person is taking advantage of the situation is about to ruin the relationship. It's a two-way street. If your partner is sowing something into your life, be intentional about sowing it back into theirs. Too many times in relationships, people, a partner wants something that they're not giving. I wouldn't say put up your hands. You know, in this kind of gatherings, it's hard to say if you relate, put up your hands because your partner is like, okay, wait till we get home. You know, you'll hear it. You know, and that's not the point. But, but, but this, it's the truth. Many times we want something. We want some degree of care or some degree of attention or some degree of something. And we want it and we're pressing for it. Well, guess what? We're not giving it. It's, it's easier for you to not nag your partner and just sow into them. Talking about nagging. Nagging doesn't work. Nagging doesn't work. Nagging doesn't work. How many times do I need to say nagging doesn't work? Before you understand that nagging doesn't work. And nagging doesn't work. Only God can change your partner. Nag God instead. Get on your knees. Let them not even know. Because some people, they will pray while they're there. Because a prayer is a message. Oh God, that my wicked husband. Can he stop that? And Habib is saying, really? You're going to use your prayer to cane me? <laughs> and then he doesn't like prayer. He doesn't like God. You know, some people take the Bible and they cane people. They beat people with the Bible. The Bible is for loving, not for beating. So, 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 so as I was saying, is this. If you need your partner to change, so patiently what you want. The key word is patiently. If I want to eat corn today, corn is one of the fastest 
growing things. I did agriculture, I forgot, but you know, three months or so, it's ready to eat or something like that. Um, but if I plant it today and I desire corn, can I eat corn? If I cry, will I get it? If I pray real hard, will I get it? If I'm patient, will I get it? That's the power of patience. Am I telling anybody anything? If there's something you want out of your spouse, then sow it. Patiently wait for your harvest. But I guarantee you this. Sowing and reaping, like the Bible says, it's, 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 it's a season and a principle that can never cease. When it ceases, the world will have come to an end. That's what the Bible says. That when, when the time comes when you sow and there's no more reaping, that the world will have come to an end. That's what the Bible says. So know this for sure. If you're sowing what you want consistently, irrespective, and I'll tell you this, if your partner is behaving badly, your first three, four days of sowing will not change them. It, 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 that's just not the way it works. There is a season and a time before the harvest will come. But if you continue to sow and you tend your seed with TLC, who knows what TLC is? Exactly. Tender, loving, care. Your harvest will come. Your harvest will come. In fact, that's one of the fastest way to turn around a negative cycle in your relationship. Can I have two people, please? I want it, one male and one female. Really, really quick. I won't embarrass you. It's been over. Brother, Dave, Brother Davidson and Sister Glory. Okay, now, she needs what? Love. And he needs respect. So, so he needs respect. She needs love. Okay, so Glory comes and she disrespects him. He said, you know, just disrespects him. Okay? Now, because she's disrespected him, how does he respond? He withdraws love. It, it, it's just normal. It's normal. You just get that. See, 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 he needs to be loved. If she is the person supposed to respect him and she disrespects him, he's going to pull his love even further away. Okay? Now, she's not getting love. Are you following the cycle? Now, she's not getting love. What's her response to not getting love? That is times two. two. Is it two squared or three squared? So, so it's love amped up, just up. But no, no, disrespect. So she, she, she pulls away more respect. She disrespects him more. What's his response? And what's her response? And where is the whole relationship going? Okay. Now, because he's attended this class and he's deep, he's figured it out. So, she suspects him. Okay? Just do your hand like that. Like, just, exactly. And he loves her. Just do like this. Good. Now, now, now. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. Now, 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 now. Guess what? She's still going to suspect him. Okay? Because she's thinking, what's wrong with him? I mean, is he going to fool me? So, suspect again. Then he loves. One more time. Okay. Suspect again. Then, love for more time. Then, disrespect again. Then, love for more time. Now, at this point, she's thinking, ah, he may be real with his love. He's been consistent. Let me test him. Why? And he loves her one more time. Then, at this point, he's like, something changes. If that goes on, something's going to click right here in her heart. And she's going to come to him tenderly. And finally, he's going to get the respect he wants. And then, because all he wanted to do anyway was love her, when he gets that respect, it's easier to love. There are times in a relationship that you're going to love under hard conditions. Write this down. You, you will have to love. Please clap for them. They did an awesome job. You are going to have to love under difficult conditions. But if you are mature spiritually, you see, I'll tell you this. If you don't know what I'm, what I'm teaching you, you see, you will be, you'll be tossed around anywhere the devil wants you to go. Which means, you see, the person who disrespects is always the less mature Christian. He's always the baby Christian. He's always the one that disrespects first. Now, the issue is this. As a Christian, you are the captain of your ship. You can direct it to the port that you plan to get it to. And my port is peace. 
There is a place called peace and joy, and that's where I'm going. And irrespective of how she's coming at me, I'm going to keep directing it at that port because I and her are getting there. Am I talking to anybody? Because I know where I'm going, and I know how to get there. Now, what happens with many Christians is, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know how to get there. She doesn't know where she's going. She doesn't know how to get there. She's suspecting. I am not loving. The cycle is going. It's back and forth. Pastor is canceling. Everything's happening. And everybody, it's, just, it's just chaotic. Let me tell you this. The condition of your marriage will affect 90% of your life, at least. If your marriage is unhappy, no matter how much money you're making, you're going to be unhappy. If your marriage is unhappy, no matter what you do, you cannot have joy. If your marriage does not work, 95% of your life is not working. Then I'll tell you, because for me, this is crazy. We go to school, everybody here, roughly 18, no, 12 to 18 years in school. Amen? To get into a career that we hope to retire from at 40. Is there anybody here that would like to retire at 45? Oh, well, yes, now. Yes, now. Yes. But, but, but you spend that much time, that much time studying. You invested money and time just so you could be successful in that career. But then you walk before Almighty God and say, I do till death do me part. And you did not study for it. You did not invest a penny in it. But you expect you'll be successful. Based on what? I mean, what's that success supposed to be based on? I mean, let's just be logical. If you don't... <sighs> failure is the only thing you can get to without planning. You can, you can get to failure consistently without planning. There's nothing else you can, you, you can achieve consistently without planning but failure. If you don't plan, it means... See, see, if you're ignorant enough not to plan, then you're ignorant enough to have planned to fail. Does that make sense? So, 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 so in everything that... Like this thing called marriage, it needs your time, it needs your dedication, it needs your effort. Effort needs to be put into studying about marriage, knowing what marriage is about, and, 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 and knowing how to be successful in marriage. You see, at the end of the day, we're all good people. But then, some of us are ignorant. And the ignorance is causing a lot of pain to ourselves and to some poor person who chose us. Am I talking to anybody? But, 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 but we shouldn't be ignorant. Amen? Fantastic. So we've, we've spoken about of, uh, unconditional love, unconditional respect, and that's wonderful. We'll start here. This is Living in Love 3. It's a teaching, so I'm going to be teaching. The importance of planning and working on your marriage. When in ignorance you fail to plan, then in ignorance you have failed, you have planned to fail. Do we just get that? Do you just get that? Does anybody here know the purpose of their marriage? Purpose. Okay, even if you're not married, if I marry, this would be the reason. And I'll tell you this. You know, some people marry for security. Did you know that? Some people marry for, for security. Some people marry for finances. Finances. You guys are quite like I'm. I'm in another country. But some people marry for finances. Some people marry for companionship. Some people marry for many different reasons. Can anybody give me some reasons why people marry? I don't want to be the only person talking. It's supposed to be interactive. <laughs> for children, fantastic. For for helpmates, for prestige and everything. Now. I can tell you this. If you marry for children and you don't have children, you know, would you have fulfilled the purpose of that marriage? Was the temptation to remain or not remain? If you marry for money and you ended up flat broke, you know, the guy you thought was something, he was just nothing. And now you're flat broke. Does it affect the marriage? If you're married for security, but the person who's supposed to keep you secure becomes your enemy, the person who's actually beating you and your danger. How does that marriage work? 
If you're married for encouragement and that person was the person that tore you down, how does it work? When you marry, you must intentionally have a purpose for your marriage that's around God. Because everything else, the devil can defeat. And when he defeats it, he's defeated your, your marriage. Your marriage must have a God-given purpose. Something, because the devil cannot defeat God. And that's what, even when things go terrible, that makes you stand. Because the purpose of your marriage remains. Any other purpose that's outside of God for your marriage can be attacked by the devil and taken down. Am I talking to anybody? Is anybody hearing anything? Amen? Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Okay, let's keep going. Um, I talk about we need wisdom from heaven for success in our marriages and our relationships. Hosea 4 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Amen? My people are what? Destroyed for lack of knowledge. It's important that we come to places like this on a regular basis, you know, to hear what's been said. It's important for us to buy books, to study, so that our marriages don't perish. Like, what the, 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 the institution that the devil attacks the most, the most, is marriage. Because, because marriage is, the, is like the, the foundation of, of society. If, if, if marriages go bad, children don't get raised well. If children don't get raised well, you've got, you've got deficient adults that are a problem to the society. So the devil is happy. So it's important that we, we know how to hold our marriages strong. And we can be an example. Right now, I don't think Christians can actually be an example of good marriages to the world. If you look at the numbers, we're like neck to neck. And it shouldn't be so. It should not be so. Amen? Everybody say, I receive wisdom from above from above for everything I do. Amen. I said it already that apart from failure, you have to plan to achieve success consistently. Failure is the only thing you can achieve consistently without planning. Amen? That's an awesome statement. If for you, I just post it on a wall somewhere so that we can, I, can, I can keep just reminding myself that I need to do something about my marriage. You know, how important is your marriage to you? I want you to ask yourself a question. How important is my marriage to me? Or how important is my relationship to me? Then the next question is, how do my actions demonstrate the importance of my relationships and my marriage? Did you get that? How have my actions been? So, 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 so if, if it's important, then I've prioritized it. So if I think if it's a pri priority, if I look at my expenses and it should be money spent on marriage education should be high up on the list. Time spent on marriage education should be high on the list. You've got to intentionally make yourself easy to love. Everybody say, I'm easy to love. Do you realize that some people are hard to love? I mean, the way they speak they act, the way they respond, it's just hard to love them. It's a greater job to love them. You make more sacrifices to do what? Love them. Now, that's not your portion. You are a child of God. You've received the love of God. Okay? You are expected to be easy to love. If, there's any, if, if there are people here who feel I'm easy to love, wave your hand. <laughs> As their spices look like... Mm. <laughs> Wait till we get in the car. <laughs> okay, but, 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 but that's the goal. That's where we're going. The first thing I'll say is this. Don't be demanding. Don't be what? Demanding. Don't be demanding. Nobody enjoys a person who it seems you're just trying to please them. Because they keep demanding. So, like, your whole life is just, just trying to please them. Be easy to please. Don't be demanding. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be your way. One thing that we've taught in this house is that having peace is more important than being right. Most fights that couples have is about being right. 
This is how it should be. But let me tell you this. When you get married, you've got two right people. The way your parents did it in your house was right. The way your parents did it in your house was right. To you, at least. Now you're together. And it's like, we usually... Give me something that people fight over, like, right. Something that's just not important, but people do fight. You know, we usually... Um, yeah, brush our teeth before we take our bath. So why are you taking your bath before you brush your teeth? It's an argument. It's like, that's not right. And then pieces fly out the window, but they keep fighting over who's right about toothpaste. Are we connecting? At any point in time, just know, like, if you're just fighting for right, let a bell ring your head. Right is not important. Peace is important. Amen? So for peace sakes, and it was like this, the most spiritually mature person steps down. The crybaby says, yes, I've had my way. That's how it goes. You know, if you marry somebody, say, say like, the Bible says, be equally yoked. It's for your own good. If you're not equally yoked, you're going to be sacrificing constantly. You're going to be the one taking the whatever, trying to turn it around till they grow. I tell people, yeah, you have two choices. You can, who knows about breaking horses? You know, if you have a wild horse, to break it because till it gets tame. Do that, you cannot get a wild horse and ride it. You are, when the horse is wild, you put it in the pen, then a, an experienced horse breaker comes and climbs on the saddle and that horse tries its very best to throw them off. Am I talking to anybody? That horse just tries to buck that person and put them off and stamp on them because it doesn't want a rider on his back. Until that person stays on, irrespective of what that horse does, because that horse will shake. But if he stays on long enough, then the horse gets broken. It starts to trot and realize that I'm not going to shake this guy. Now, if you marry, I'll tell you what to look for in a person to marry. Now, if you don't get those points in that person, you can still marry them. But the difference is this. The one who has the seven points I'm going to give you is going to be tame. So, it's going to be a nice, comfortable ride. You know? Year one, year ten, everything is cool. He's getting you gifts, he's communicating, he's listening. Okay? But, the guy who, you know, is smoking, he's drinking, you know, he's like, hasn't yet done what he needs to do, you can marry him. But the ride is going to be like that because he's going to be trying to throw you off. Am I talking to anybody? But, 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 but after years of pain and suffering, you're going to get to a point where, you know, it's cool. And, and I'll tell you this, and I'm not trying to encourage you to, to, to follow any bad boy. I think I wasn't really broken in when I got married. Right now, I'm not doing badly. But I showed mommy something, you know. You know, I really, really appreciate her because she was special with me. Because I did a lot of stuff. I got married at 23. How much sense does, this, does a 23-year-old have? Not much. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, you know, but, 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 but those are the choices you have. Do you get it? So, so it's good to look and see that you get somebody that's, that's close to where you are so you can both have a good ride. Amen? Be considerate. It's important to be considerate. Think about the other person. If you're not considerate, what happens is this. That person is showing love and niceness to you and you're just taking it. And, and you're not just giving it back. And it gets tedious after a while. There's nothing like two people who are serving themselves. It's like, darling, how was your day today? You know, walk, okay, you know, don't worry, don't worry, I'll fix something for you. Say, no, 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 don't worry, I'll watch the place while you do cooking. You know, you're serving each other. Inconsiderate guy, Two of you went to work. Two of you pay the bills. Comes back is, oh, I'm tired. Give me the remote control. Ah, Arsenal. Okay. Is the food ready? Oh, Manchester United. <laughs> I don't watch football, so I don't know who is who. You know, and um, <laughs> that's not considerate. Amen? So, 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 I, and I say this. Love is intentional. Write this down. It's really, it's, like, love is not an emotion. It's something you do. And if you do it long enough, the emotion will come. I believe so strongly that, 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 that um, arranged marriages can work. For what I know now of love, arranged marriages can work well. Love is a decision. Before I decide, I'm saying, you know, will I go? Will I not go? But, but once I get to the point where I decide to go, 
that this is the one I have chosen. I believe I can love her till her whole mind is like blown completely. Because it's something that you do. I listen to you when you're talking. How many men have heard their wives or, or partners say, you're not listening to me? You can move your hand. They won't kill you. Okay, I see a few. Yeah, yeah, you know, she's not even here. She can't beat you. Uh, video guy, don't, don't show him. Oh. We're good. <laughs> Seriously. I, 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 there are things that you learn. Back in the day, you're like, you're not. Okay, for me, it was, it was really weird. We've been together during the afternoon. We're together at 7 o'clock, 8, 9, 10, 11. I'm exhausted. I'm about to sleep. And she starts to talk. And at first, I'll just settle down well. And next thing, I'm snoring. And she's like, really pissed off. It's like, you're not listening to me. You're not listening to me. And that was a problem for a while. Because she wants to talk. Then the other problem too was, each time she's talking, I think it's a complaint, so I'm solving it. It's like, she says, no, 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 no. I'll pay for that one. No, don't worry. I'll do And every solution I give, she's rejected. I think, what's wrong with these women? What's wrong with these women? What's wrong? And I hang with my boys. <laughs> Anybody following that? But, 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 but later on, I don't want to jump. We're going to get into communication. Women communicate differently. And there's one thing that you guys, if you learn, it's a kicker. You see, guys are visual. Men can look and they're on. Women talk. Women talk you into intimacy. Anytime she's talking, it means something good is coming. You go wash your face, get a straight back chair, sit up. Say, yes, darling, I'm listening. Okay. Oh, how did she treat you that way? That's not good. Talk some more. Because you're going somewhere good. Did I set some people free? <laughs> Seriously, you know? See, 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 see. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's... <laughs> Let things go easily. <laughs> Amen? Let things go easily. I see, and, and, and these things, do it, do it on purpose. Like, there, there are times when I hear something and it's something that really should upset me and I'm going in that direction and I tell myself, where does the devil want me to go now? He wants to go in that direction. And I tell myself, I'm not going. <laughs> I'm going to go here. Then I just, I just chill. Always figure out where does the devil want you to go. And anytime you find yourself aligning with the devil, you know, you can't align with the devil and with God at the same time. You must love God enough to always want to be in alignment with him. So if you ever catch yourself going in a direction that, I mean, I'm about to really get upset and give them a piece of my mind. Keep your mind to yourself. Don't scatter your mind. He says, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. So, sister, keep your mind. You know, don't distribute your mind in that manner. It's not good. Amen. Because really, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your mind. So which one did you give them? Everything is biblical. If you love God with all your mind, that time that you give them a piece, where, where did you get it? Except you are in disobedience. And that's not your portion. Did anybody get the rema in that statement? Because if you're loving God, you won't obey him. So if you, if, you, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Seriously. There's something about giving, putting our minds in submission to God. Half the time, we, we say we surrender, we sing the songs, we put our hands up, but our minds in particular have not been submitted to God. There's a level of submission of your mind to God that you're not querying him. You're not asking him to prove himself. You are just in obedience. That's where we falter the most. The submission of our minds to the Father. Am I talking to anybody? Am I going too deep? I'm trying to keep this very, very, you know. Okay. Let things go easily. Be a good listener. A good, just learning how to listen it will solve a lot of problems. One, you can't talk and listen at the same time. So if your partner is talking, keep quiet. Just very simple. Many times we cut people off while they're talking. Why? Because we have something more important to say. Why? What's the root? Pride. 
If you have a partner who each time you talk, they cut you off, they have a pride issue. The root is pride. Because they just believe that their, 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 their view, what they say, is of greater importance. So they don't want you to finish what you're saying. They say it. I think I touched a few people right there. But, 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 but just get that. So, so on purpose, see, it's like, like the, Christi- the, the successful Christian life is an intentional life. You intentionally, you want to talk, keep quiet, let them finish. Sometimes I said, well, you spoke so long, I couldn't remember what you said, said at first. Who's heard that before? Because I used to feel, because women can talk. So by the time she's reached point 20, I forgot point one. So how do I address it? So I get my phone or a piece of paper. And as she's talking, I make my, my I, I, you, see, you, see, you see, work with the system. I make my notes. So when she's done, I say, okay, point one. This is my answer. Point two is my answer. Because to be careful, men don't have memory like that. See, women too need to start to, you know, pace yourself. Pace yourself. Am I talking to anybody? Does anybody relate to what I'm saying? Seriously. Because, because and then the, 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 the other thing is that men and women are different. We're going to get to it. Men have empty boxes in their heads. Women's brains are all interconnected. So this one affects what you did two years ago can affect you today if you, are, if you didn't deal with it well because it's all connected. The guy has locked the box. It's like it never happened. Who here has dealt with a man who there was an issue, then the next day he comes and he acts normal like nothing happened. Yeah, men do that. Men have that capacity, but women don't. Women she cannot leave it till you deal with it. And half the time, men feel it's dealt with, but it's not. Till two years after, you just simply looked at the girl in the short skirt. And it's like, look at you again. And you're thinking, I thought we settled that three years ago. But we'll get to communication soon. I think the spirit is trying to take me to communication, but I'm trying to go step by step. Amen? Okay. Be a good listener. Be an encourager. The world needs encouragers. Um, you are supposed to be the chief fan of your partner. If your partner had a fan club, you're supposed to be the chairman or the chair lady. Seriously speaking. It's like, think about it. Um, can I have two people? Two, two, one male, one female? Yes, 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 two people. Quick, 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 quick. One male, one male. I need a female, please. His name is Paul. He's going to, for an interview, okay? Interview. And her name is Nigel. And, um, you know, she's right here. His, his name is Davidson. Everybody, his name is Davidson, okay, and her name is Nigel, and okay, Davidson and, and, and Nigel, they have something going, amen? So, he's going for an interview, and she, he, she's the last person he sees before he goes, and, um, and, and um, he goes for the interview, you know, and uh, it didn't work out, you know, it didn't work out. So he, so, he comes back home to, so Davidson comes back home to Nigel, and Nigel says, did you get the job? He said, no. I said, well, I didn't, think you, 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 I didn't think you would get it. You didn't study. Look at you. Even that kind of high, high job, is that the job you are looking for? You know? You know, try some other thing that you can, you, you can handle so money can come quickly. Eh? Kai, I don't understand you. And she goes away. Now, in the morning, he goes for another interview. What frame of mind is he going in? He's like this. He's like this. What chances does he have to make it? Very slim. Okay, same scenario. He comes back, he lost the job. So, he said, darling, it didn't work out. And, she, and Nigel says, don't mind those people. They don't know what they, are, they have missed. You know, in fact, that job, I didn't think it was good enough for you. Seriously, I can see you in this executive job with driver, everything, everything, living in my town. Everything. Like, don't worry. Those people, this, this, a better one is coming tomorrow. And then he goes away. Then tomorrow morning, how does he go to work? He's like, he's going there to conquer the world. Because what? He has an encourager behind him. Care for them. There will be major movie stars in Nollywood. I see it coming. Okay, so, 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 so do you see how important it is the words you speak to your partner is? You see, sometimes we're not thinking at all. We're actually just not thinking. We're saying whatever comes to our heads. So it's like, you just, there's just no encouragement. In fact, it's like a beat down. That's not... See, I'll tell you this. I'll write this down. You've got to know your purpose in your partner's life. You've got to know. I, and I say no, I mean have a revelation of your purpose in their life. 
And you've got to, to stay with that purpose. For example, young, glory, com com comfort, comfort. You know, you know, assuming I was like a million years younger and I met this beautiful woman, you know, um, and, and I said, you know what, I choose you, I'm going to love you. And I know in my heart that I want to encourage her. I want to make sure that, that, that she gets the best out of life. That whatever vision God put in her heart, that together we're going to work it out. I want to be her strong tower. I want to be the person where if anything happens to her anywhere in the world, she's going to come to me like, like, like the, the straightest line because she knows I'm her safe place. I'm a place of encouragement. I'm her oasis in the desert. Amen? And I know that's it. Now, if she did something to me, if she offended me because offenses will come. Now, if I start to, to, to strike her, if I start to abuse her, am I fulfilling that purpose? So I must never do that. At any point in time, no matter what's going on, I know I'm here to, 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 to help her like, just enjoy God's joy some more. My job is to express God to her. His love, his joy, his unconditional presence, everything to her. That's my purpose in her life. And I know it. So at any point in time, I'm about to violate that. Something in me pulls me back. I'm not supposed to be that to her. Okay? And more than anything else is this. And we're going to get to it soon, but I'll talk about it now. If the best person to marry is a person who has a revelation of how much God loves them and they've received it. Seriously. For me, that, it was a game changer. Um, I got to the point where it's like, wow, God loves me. Wow, I am special. I am the apple of his eye. No kidding. My expectations are like the best. Always. Then I know that God is not, a, you, know, you know, he doesn't like, we're all the same. He's not a respecter of persons. So I know for a fact that the same love he has for me is the same one he has for her. There's something about that. If There's something about that. Now, if she offended me, even if it crossed my mind to raise my hand, I know she's the, she's the apple of God's eye. So this God I love so much, I will strike the apple of his eye? I couldn't. I just couldn't. So I'm going to look for some other way to get out of that. And I'm not going to treat her bad too. Because I know how much God loves her. So, so, so most times people treat you bad. Hurts people, hurts people. Hurts people, hurt people. They're hurting. They're hurting. That they, they, they have not. See, God's love heals. There's no. There's nothing could have happened to you in this world that God's love cannot heal and transform you. But if you haven't received that love, then you're hurting. Then all of a sudden, I'm hurting other people, all the time. That's not the portion. You will marry a man who will cherish you, love you, will worship the ground that you live in Jesus' name. And, 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 and I'll tell you this to all the couples here and all the people. It, it, it's, 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 a, it's a joyful thing to make somebody else joyful. It's just a joyful thing. You see, see you've got to take delight in seeing them happy. You've got to take delight in seeing them joyful. You see, it's only a selfish spirit. It's so into me. It's all about me. So you're thinking about your comfort, your joy, your everything. And that's terrible. It's not sustainable. You have to think about the other person. If you're not thinking about the other person all the time, you're not there yet. You've got to be able to just, at any time, what, and, and, and preempt their needs. What's she going to need? What's he going to need? Uh, you know, what's, you know ju just think ahead and do something. It's not about the thought. People say, you know, it's the thought that counts. No, it's the action that counts. People say, you know, it's the thought that counts. No, thoughts can just... Be ye not hearers only, but doers of the word. If it was just thoughts, we'd just be hearers only. But it's what you do that affects your life, affects your relationships, affects everything. Amen? Man, I've not covered ground. Okay. Be an encourager. Let what's important to them be important to you. Now, this is the realm of Christian living. If they like to smoke Igbo, then, you know, don't follow them to like to smoke Igbo. If you know, people, people online, Igbo is like Indian... Is what? Cannabis. Something. Marijuana. marijuana. Like, now, if they like smoking marijuana, it doesn't mean you should, should like it. But, but, but in the realms of, of decent things, like for example, if your husband likes to play a certain game, try and learn that game. 
Because that's, that, 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 that becomes the conversation. That becomes the whatever. And there's something that you like to do, husband, you to try to learn what she likes to do. It, it, it just facilitates the communication, the, the, the fellowship. It makes it richer. There's always something to talk about because you have similar interests. It's on purpose. You intentionally have similar interests. These things, you've got to learn these things. If you don't do it, you're going to struggle. And that's not what God wants. He wants you to enjoy your relationships. Amen? Uh, never take offense. See, offenses will come. And I like the way the English language says, and I took offense. It means you took it. Did you have to take it? No. So, so offenses will come. It's a wonderful thing to look at your partner and make a pledge to yourself in your heart that I will not take offense from this person. And whatever this person does, no matter what, I will forgive them. Even before it's done. It's called setting your mind. You see, if offense came and I had to decide when offense came, I'm not, I'm not calm. My hormones are up. My blood is high. And I'm trying to say, will I take offense? I will make the wrong decision. The whole idea is that you set your mind. Everybody say set your mind. You set your mind. You set your mind. It's like, I will not take offense from this person. Any couples in here, look at each other. And I want you to look them in the eye and say, I will not take offense from this person. Let's say, say so loud we can hear. <laughs> I mean it. No, no, I, I, and, and I'll tell you this. If you're intentional about your life and your relationships, you can direct it to where it's supposed to go. God doesn't want you to, he, he doesn't want the devil to push you back and forth, tossed around. Like a, like, like a wave, like, like, like the wind tosses the waves back and forth. God doesn't want you to do that. He wants you to be the captain of, you know, with his help, captain your ship to where it's supposed to go. A place of peace, of joy, unity, agreement. Everybody say agreement. Agreement is one of the least things people pray for. From today, let the spirit of agreement be one of your prayers every single day. Because you are, see, if, if two cannot agree, can they work together? No. Two must agree for them to work together. So agreement actually is really, really important. There are times when, when there are couples and they practically don't agree on anything. How peaceful is that? And let me tell you one other thing too. God does not abide outside of peace. You know, it's like you can pray God, be in this house, control everything. If there's no peace in that house, his presence is grieved. He's not really, really moving. Did you know that? Guess who operates in strife? Say it louder. The devil. So, so, so if, if ignorantly you create a strifeful environment in your home, in your relationship, you are inviting the devil to... It's an open door. It's called an open door for the devil to come in and operate. And that's not your plan. Because anybody doing that is doing it ignorantly. And you don't want that. Amen? Don't get angry. Do not get angry. Angry is not attractive. It's not sexy. It's not anything. I, I mean, have you seen somebody who is just angry, angry, and you just feel, I love that guy. He really, I like the way he gets angry. You know, I, I just love the way he fumes and his nose is bigger and I can see the blood vessels on his forehead. It's really good. It, 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 did we? I don't think so. Not, not really. So, self-control is a fruit of the spirit. Everybody say self-control is a fruit of the spirit. I, I like, at a later teaching, if you put love on this side, self-control on this side, everything in between falls in place. Say one more time. If you put love here, Love is standing. Self-control is standing and, and operating. Everything in between will work out. Because self-control will keep you from getting out of love. Self-control keeps you working in love. Do you just get that? And, and, and you can't say you don't have self-control. You have, as a born-again believer, you have self-control. It's a fruit of the Spirit. Amen? Fantastic. Okay. The other thing is that when people, do, when people offend you, make excuses for them. It affects the way you, you, you respond. If somebody was late and you're thinking, how can they be late? Can they do it? I mean, that's just disrespect. You just get angry. But, but if they were late, I'd say, okay, you know, I'm sure maybe it rained. I'm sure, you know, 
maybe they couldn't get transport. I'm sure maybe they, they got a call as they were coming out. I'm sure something. I've made excuses for them. It keeps me calm. It keeps me rational. Okay? So, 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 and it's really important that you make it a habit. You intentionally make excuses for people. Soft didn't come home on time. Oh, I'm sure somebody kept him. I'm sure he wanted to come on time, but hey, I'm sure that he has a good reason. So now, I'm not fuming. But if I'm thinking, he should know better than that. He should know better than that. Yeah, I'm sure he should know better than that. Now I'm really fuming. When someone walks to the door, is attack. And what comes out of it? Not a lot of... Exactly. So, so make excuses. Did this, did this teach anybody anything? About make excuses? If you did, just wave your hands so I just know. About make, making excuses for people? Yes, we'll, we'll get there very soon. <laughs> okay. And then always... Always treat people better. Okay, you know, you always treat people better when you make excuses for them. Okay, and don't assume the worst. Fantastic. Couples, show yourselves love. Like for me, gift giving really works. I mean, like even if gift giving is, gift receiving is not your love language. I'll tell you that receiving something makes you feel good. So be generous to one another. Generosity is attractive. Generosity is beautiful. So just, and, and it, it doesn't have to be expensive gifts, but the fact that I thought about you and I did something. So I bought you this piece of fabric. You know, fabric doesn't cost a lot, you know. I, I, I bought you this and that. It's something. It's something. It just, it's, it just works. It just works. Did anybody receive a gift lately? Within the last two weeks? One or two people? Did anybody give a gift within the last two weeks? Fantastic. Fantastic. So, so be gift givers. It really really works. I've said it before, so patiently what you desire to reap. I write this down because it's a, it's a point I want you to do. You sow patiently what you desire to reap. Amen? If you desire to reap it, you sow it. You know, be deliberate in all your interactions with your partner. Too many times I've seen people say things to their partners that I'm thinking, did you think before you said that? Or what are you thinking when you did that? It's like, it's like, did you think it through to figure out the response you'll get from them when you said that thing? Is anybody just, just because it, it, it just came and they spoke, but they were not deliberate. Like, this thing, it's, it's not everything you have to tell your spouse or your partner. There, there are some things that telling, it's like, like it's as if you, sh you shifted a burden from your head to theirs. Is that love? I'll carry the burden. I'll carry that, 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 that burden and, and sort it out. You know, it's not everything that, will, that they hear. See, if what you tell them will not bless them, then, then handle it. Does that make some sense? Does it make sense? Fantastic. Fantastic. Reversing negative cycles. We did that demonstration. Deliberate in your interactions. Be clear about your purpose. We've done that. Revelation of your purpose is fantastic. Okay. What you are looking for is not a man or woman that goes to church. What you're looking for is not a man. Because many people, I've heard this story. The guy is messing up big time. But I met him in church. His brother, so, so, and so. And I say, if I go to the Fulani guy and take a cow from him, and I park it in my garage for six whole months, it doesn't become a Ferrari. It's still a cow. It's still a cow. Many cows in the garage. Because sometimes like, he's been in church for one year. He's a worker. He's this. But then, he was not the right person. What you're looking for is a person who's received the Father's love. Now, to receive the Father's love, you have to first have a revelation that the love exists. I could do a demonstration to you that if... I say take this, but you can't see it. You cannot receive it. You can't receive what you can't see. Revelation means that it's been revealed to you, you can see. If the Father's love has not been revealed to you, you cannot receive it. And if you have not received it, you will not be a good partner. There is a level of receiving the Father's love that causes you to have reverence for the Father enough to obey him in all that he asks of you. Any brother 
or donkey parked in the garage for two years, three years, four years, who is able to ask you for sex before marriage has not received the father's love. Because there is a love and a reverence you have for the father that when he says, don't do this, you cannot do it, not because of the woman or man, but because of him. I can tell you that when we were, when I was younger, you know, I, I, I really can of imagine that. Somehow mommy preferred if I said, I'm straight because of you. But I said, I'm really straight because I can't offend the father. We must get to a point where we love God more than our spouses. Because that's what's going to keep us straight. No matter how hard you check his phone, no matter how hard you follow him, and you, and you just do all sorts of interrogation and I spy higher people, you can't keep a tab on a sharp guy. Especially if they came from Lagos. <laughs> I know I crack you up. Um, <laughs> so, 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 so the best thing you can do is hook them up with Father God. Make sure that they've seen his, they, they, they have a revelation of his love. See, anybody that has a true revelation of God's love and has received it will be a perfect partner to you. If I say perfect, I mean perfect. Because they so fear God that they're doing the right things, whether you're there or not. So the risk you take when you follow a person that not, has, has not received that love from God is that, you know, anything can happen. I have a statement that I coined here. It says, beware. Anyone that is willing to intentionally disobey God in one thing will most likely disobey God in anything, if not everything. I will read it slower so you can get it. It says, beware. You want, I would like you really to write this down. It says, beware. It says, anyone that is willing to intentionally and I know that word intentionally, on purpose, disobey God. Anyone that is willing to intentionally disobey God in one thing will disobey God in anything, if not everything. So the idea is this. If he has the intention to ask you for sex before marriage, then when God said, don't beat her, he will most likely beat her. When God says, be kind and gentle, these are the fruits of the Spirit. He will most likely be rough and unkind. Are you getting where I'm going? There is a way, to be quite frank, that you are able to assess the person you're dealing with to know if this is going to be a tame ride or a wild ride. You know, I described, I, I, I described earlier on that rides can be tame, rides can be wild, Okay? The, 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 the states that the person is. I'm going to go very quickly through seven things here because I really want to get to this point. One, these are seven things you look for in a potential partner and spouse. Seven things. Seven things. Are we good? Am I moving too fast? Seven things. The first is this, that they have a revelation of how much they are loved by God. You can only receive what you see. So one, they must have a clear revelation of how much they are loved by God. Because it's going to affect how much love you get. God is love. He's the source of our love. Okay? And to be quite frank, it, it, it's, if they receive a lot of love from God, then they have the capacity, they have the ability to give more love to you. But if they haven't received much from God, then they don't actually have the capacity to give you that much. No matter how much you beat them or shake them, they just don't have the capacity. Am I talking to anybody? Number two, they have received this love to overflowing. And I'll tell you this. You know how the, the parable of the source describes the heart of man as ground. When the ground is dry, okay, and you put some liquid on it, can liquid flow from it to another ground? This question has a gift. We give gifts here. If the ground is dry and you pour water on it, not enough, just a little bit of water, can that ground give that water to another ground? Get a gift. Now, it's, it's just very simple. The ground is your heart and God is only finished with love. 
Now, you have to open your heart and receive his love to overflowing, overflowing, to be able to, 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 to spread that love to the next ground, which is the next heart. So if I'm walking with you, I'm dealing with you, no matter who you are to me, I want some love to flow from me to you. The only way I can achieve that consistently is by having a pipeline into the Father's love. So I am a worshiper, I'm receiving the love, and as I get the love, I'm able to flow it in any direction I go. Does it make some sense? Is it logical? It makes sense. Fantastic. Three, the abundant love of God in them is overflowing into all their relationships, not just with you. When, if I'm coming after you, I can be nice to you, nice, nice, nice to you. But how am I dealing with my driver, my guard, my people? How am I dealing? The easiest way to see is that, you know, if that love is just like general, I know they're there. But if it's to me, especially, they're very, it's like, they're nice to me. You know, they, they, they give me gifts, they, they spend money on me, they ask after how I'm doing. But I'm the only one that's doing that too. It's not a good sign. So you've got to know that this person that you're with, you, you see other people responding to their love. And people respond to love. If, if, if you are the only one responding to, his, to that person's love, then be, just beware. So you're looking for a person that you can see that other people are responding to their love. And people will respond to love. Do you just get that? Number one, what are we? Four. The person, you will see that they are intentionally walking in love. They are intentionally walking in love. Where you can see that, you will see them that in situations where offense came, and you can see that they did not take the offense. You know, they didn't get angry. And there are times when you do something to somebody that, you know, that, you know I dropped the ball. They should be angry. But guess what? We're still talking. That's a good sign. If you're not talking for two, three, four days, it's a very bad sign. Because God doesn't do that to us. Amen? They fear God. Fearing God means it's a reverence. The fear of God is not a terroristic fear of God. It's a reverence for God. There's this thing where, where I mean, I, I, I love God. So if he says this is the way or don't do this, I'm going to try my best not to do it. I'm going to stay out of situations that can lead me to doing it. Amen? And, and, and if there's anything where I'm not sure whether God wants it or not, I'll just drop it. Because guess what? I don't even want to deal with, am I right or wrong? Just drop it. Amen? Did you just get that? Consistently and intentionally work on increasing the exposure to the word of God. Strengthening the inner anointing. I'll read it one more time. And this just means that if they're not studying their Bible, they're not going to church, they're not doing things to build up their inner anointing. Be afraid. Because what's working, what's operating on the inside? Amen? See, see, there can't be a blazing fire if there's no fuel. So, I can act like there's plenty of fire. I can speak in tongues. I mean, the donkeys in the garage, they're speaking in tongues. But they're not Ferraris. Am I talking to anybody? <laughs> yeah, they're speaking in tongues. So, 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 so you want to make sure that they're, you know, they're doing the right things. Studying the Bible, they were there praying, you know, and then I, I, I heard this thing. Somebody says, you know, I'm just a prayer person, and they, and they don't read the Bible much. But I'm thinking, what are you praying about? I mean, like, like, how do you know God's will? It says that if you pray according to my will, you know, I'll grant your request. But you, 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 you openly say, I, I, I really don't read the Bible. I'm just a prayer person. That is so... We need to... It's when you read the Bible that you know the word, see, your mouth is a gun. But if you're shooting empty cartridges, you're not doing anything. The word of God is the bullets. The bullets in your mouth is the word. So you're shooting the word. Amen? And the last one, seven, which is very important, is that the person, uh, that, that they are fully submitted to a spiritually mature leader who can speak authoritatively into their lives. And this is how it works. It is a perfect fail-safe. I have had a lot of people come to me, especially women, and things are bad. The guy is like gone, he's just like, he's just gone, what now? He's just gone really bad. Okay? And we say, okay, call him, let's talk to him. He says, no, I'm not coming. I said, okay, who can talk to him? Can his father talk to him? No, 
Can't talk to him. Does he have an uncle that can talk to him? No, uncle can't talk to him. Who can talk to him? Nobody. So, guess what? The donkey is wild, or the horse is wild. He's acting rough, and nobody can rein him in. Don't do that to yourselves. You see, I, I, I like look for somebody, an elder, that's spiritually mature, and both of you convince yourself to go there and say, look, dad, mom, if we ever have problems that we can't sort out, we will come to you. And when we come to you, we believe you will judge the case fairly. Don't take it to a family member. Take it to somebody that's not a family member. We'll judge it fairly. And whatever you judge, we will live by it. Whatever you say, we will do. So have that person there and then live your life normally. Because life happens. And when stuff happens, you might just need somebody to speak into that relationship. So I, and, 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 and truly, if everywhere I've seen couples that had nobody to speak authoritatively into their lives, um, it's been rough. They've had to find their way themselves. And it took time and it hurt. Am I talking to, to anybody? Amen? What did we learn today? I need five people to tell me what we learned today. Yvonne, talk to me what you learned today. Um, oh, things to look for in a person to marry. One of them is to be considerate. To be considerate. A person that's not always thinking about themselves. That thinks about you and other people. If they think about you only, uh, but consider where you can just see that they just consider it, including you. Because sometimes people get it inverted too. They are considered with people outside, but not with you on the inside. That's not good either. With you and the others. Fantastic. Uh, get a gift. Samuel, talk to me. Talk to me, talk to me. I, I learned that we should be intentional. Yes, we must be intentional. In our relationship. You must be intentional. Fantastic. F intentional about what? Loving our partner. Fantastic. Get a gift. Uh, two people here. Um, Dami and the young man in front of him. Fantastic. Okay. What I learned today was that whatever you want to see in your partner, you have to sow patiently and hoping to get that in return as you sow patiently. Fantastic. 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 Get a gift. Sow patiently and you will get your reward. Nigel, talk to me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Before Nigel, this young man. That's, that was the order. Talk to me. I learned that it's good to have um, a, a revelation of your purpose in your partner's life. Exactly. And what's an example of your purpose in that person's life? To intentionally love. Fantastic. <laughs> we, 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 people are growing. People are learning something. Fantastic. For instance, okay, good. Okay. Not getting angry easily. Exactly. Anger is not attractive. It's just not an attractive thing. Um, Nigel, how many gifts do you have left? Okay, but I'll still take a few questions, but no gift. I'll take this handsome man here in the suit just in a minute. Oh, yeah, Nigel, talk to me real quick. I'm praise God. I learned that anybody that can disobey God in one thing can disobey him in anything. That's right. You know, it's just a capacity. If you have that capacity to do it in this thing, then you have the capacity to do it in that thing. It's dangerous. Let's not have that kind of capacity in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I learned that um, the best person to marry is one who has the revelation of God's love. Exactly. God's love for them. And they've received it. So they know the Father's love. Amen. Are we good? We're done? Yes. What you learned? Um, be your partner's cheerleader. Always cheer them up. Try to encourage them every time. Fantastic. Cheerleader. I have two questions here. I'm going to treat really quick before we close. First is, in the case of domestic violence, are we to keep sowing? That's a good question. I'll have opened it to the house, but we don't have time. The first time they raise their hand at you, say, bros, you do it again, it's over. Am I talking to anybody? The first time, one warning. i very serious, like, guy, this thing you are doing, don't do it again. Don't do it. If it's done the next time, pack your load, separation. Don't stay in abuse. I didn't say divorce him, I said separate. Put a distance between him and that person so, so that they can think it through and figure out if they really want to be here. People may have some response to that. I, I'd like to take 
Somebody say something about this situation. Okay, talk to me. Um, what if there, you don't have anybody to go to at that point? No place to no go. No place to go. No place to go to do you that's because we did not go to church. We did not be a part of a family. That's what, see, 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 I'll tell you this. People underestimate the power of a real church. The family. You know, we call ourselves brother, sister. There's a reason why we do that. And if we are churches that are real churches, you will have built relationships with people and the church that they would help. Seriously. Uh, when you find yourself alone in the world, in a, in a dark place, nowhere, no, nowhere to call, is because you had a lot of opportunities to build a web of good relationships, and you didn't. So, well, you've done that, but then, at this point, you start to build good relationships with people who can actually take you out. But it's very hard for you to remain with the abuser and things change. Except, you see, the other thing too, if, the, if, if you had a person that they were, that you are submitted to. Okay, I can imagine, I have some young men under me. I mean, I may call some names, but you will never beat your wives. But maybe, Pastor Kinsley now, wife comes and says that, Pastor Kinsley beat me. I said, go and call your husband. <laughs> I said, I said, and when he comes, don't follow him. And when Kinsley comes in, I said, enter. And I lock the door. I look at the key, and I throw it outside the window. So as I'm talking to him, I know he's really shaking. Because he, he has no idea what's going to happen. When I'm done, he will go back home and he will love his wife. That's because he has a father. Don't marry an orphan. Don't marry an orphan. I'm going to do a teaching called the orphan spirit. Orphan spirit. An orphan cannot give you love because he has not received love. Not because the father is not loving but he has not received love. Amen? Are we good? So, did that answer good? So, so basically, she needs to start, see, see, what she didn't do was build those relationships. She needs to start building them up quickly to the point where it can work for her. But it's important. I, and actually, I, I, I suffered from that in the past as well. So I know what it's like. How long do you keep sewing until you see change? So it's, it's a similar question. How long do you keep sewing? Now, if it's not like violence and that level of abuse, if it could take a while. It just depends on the state that the person is in. But it will finally break. Okay? That's why when you see, see, many people have just married without looking. You know, the guy is just like out there doing his thing. I say, yes, I'll be your wife. Or I'll be, or, or, or she's out there. I say, okay, you know what? We'll just get married. It, these are problems that people in the world should have. Not Christians. Do you get if you marry somebody who really has given his heart to God, um, you know, not everybody's perfect. Stuff might happen, but it shouldn't be too long. But, but it could be a while. But if you stay the cause, it will change. Seriously. It could be years. But if you stay the cause, it will change. I, I had a friend. Um, he met one girl in Calabar. You know, I don't know what to say about Calabar. But, but, you know, and he was not nice to his, to his wife. He actually was not nice to his wife. Um, you know, but he was just nice. But, but, but she was patient. And she kept saying, kept saying, right now they're the most loving couple. Everything is cool. Everything is fine. And it's like nothing ever happened. But there were some, maybe two, three years, things were really, really rough. But now things are good. You know? So what can I say? Amen? All eyes closed. All eyes bowed. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Lord, we thank you for the words that you've spoken into our hearts, into our ears and hearts this evening. Lord, we know that it is your desire that we really get to know you more. That we, it's your desire for us to have a, an intimate relationship with you. It's your desire, my Father, that we receive your love. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we receive your love. Lord, we pray that you give us grace and the ability to just receive more of your love. Just more. So, Father, we thank you. We pray that every word that you've spoken over us this evening, that you activate these words in our hearts, Lord. That we will not just be hearers, but doers as well. That we will do this word that we've heard. And that our relationships will really be enjoyable. It will, they will be joyful. They will be peaceful. They will be prosperous. They will just be an awesome environment for us to raise our children and build further relationships and enjoy a good and a fruitful life in Jesus' name. 
So, Father, we thank you. Father, we bless your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Let the people of God shout a much louder. Amen. Amen.